Probably one of the most useful AI masks is the radial gradient. It's one that I use quite a bit. It can be used in our image editing to create a vignette, but generally not quite the sort of vignette that we looked at in video 22. It's similar, but it's meant to be far more subtle. It's a very versatile mask and I use it mostly to focus attention into the main subject in the picture by darkening down the edges and the corners. It's a simple technique, but in the right circumstances and with the right image, it can transform it immensely. Now, as you've just seen, all we need to do to apply the radial gradient is very much what we did with the linear gradient, but obviously a slightly different shape. For the moment, let me go to the masks top right. I'm going to delete this mask and we'll reselect it. It does have a shortcut. The shortcut is the J key. When I select it, I can click and drag a small area or a large area. It really doesn't matter because once we've got it created, we can adjust it in any way we feel as appropriate. And we can rotate it if that's necessary too. Or move the whole thing. Let me just move it back here a bit and you can get the idea. Now we're used to seeing two aspects of any mask. We have the overlay, which is shown by that red shading, but we also have the frame or what's often referred to as the pin. Now the pin is something we often need to see on screen and then off. Sometimes it gets in our way. So here's a shortcut key that is worth learning. It's the V key. The V key leaves the mask working perfectly, as you can see here. It leaves the mask working but it just hides that frame away from us. But at any time we need it back to make an adjustment, then all we've got to do is tap it, and there we are back into it. Now, once again here, I'm gonna to go to my mask and I'm gonna delete it. Because if we look at the image, we can see a clear problem at the top edge, left, right, and at the base but the center of the screen looks about right. So I want to keep things simple here, but if we pick up the radial gradient now, all I would be doing would be clicking and dragging over that center portion. Now, the one thing we need to remember with all masks, and I know I've already said this, but it's worth repeating. When we select a mask, as I have just done, all of the sliders that are going to control that mask open up on the right hand side. To go back to global editing of the entire image, then we would go to the top right and we would go back to the basic tab. But very much like the vignette we looked at in Photoshop, at the moment I've got the center portion of my image selected and I want everything but. I want the corners and the edges. Now there's two ways we can do this. There's a shortcut key and it's very quick and easy to remember, but let's look at where the command is. The command is just here. There it is. We want to invert the mask. It says Alt plus X, but I've noticed that if I just touch the X key, it switches to the outer edge. And as we know from previous masks, as soon as I start to make an adjustment, our pink overlay will disappear. Now I'm going to remove that by bringing the exposure down. I'm gonna hit the V key to get rid of that pin because this is a really good example of what I was saying in the introduction. Let me turn this off as well. Because as I bring down the exposure, look at the difference that makes to the image. Now we do have other choices here we can adjust the feather radius. So if we want the feather to be greater or less, we've got control there. But here we've got a vignette on the image, which we don't instantly spot as soon as the image appears on screen. And yet if I just turn it on and off, 
The difference it's making to the image is phenomenal, and that's just a quick and dirty demonstration. Now with this example we may be able to use both sides of the mask, the center and the outside. So here I may pick up my radial gradient. I'll click and drag. Now just remember that if you touch the V key, the frame will not show even when you open up a new image. So if you ever start a radial gradient and you can't see the pin and you need to, just touch the V key. So all I want to do here is just to rotate it just over that stone there, something like that. Remembering, of course, that the X key will now switch that to the outer edge. Once again, I'm going to touch the V key and I'm just going to bring the exposure down. There's a lot more we can do here, but I'm just going to bring the exposure. We've got all of the contrast sliders, we've got color temperature and many more. So this is just the basics, but look at the difference already. But if I go to the top here, I can duplicate and invert the mask. Now I've got the rock selected because if I needed to just lift the shadows of the rock or I wanted to put some more color into that rock or a little bit of exposure into that rock, you can see I can do so. And of course, even now I can touch that V key because if I think I haven't got it quite right and I want to change things a little bit, I can do so. Here's an image with different content where the same radial gradient could work in our favour. I think this needs a little bit less exposure on the bird, but then it could do with quite a healthy amount around the outer edge of the bird. So I'm going to use the shortcut key because it really is convenient, J, click and drag. Now as I do so and I release, you can see once again I've lost the pin, but all we need to bring that back is the V key because what I want to do here is just tailor this to get it quite close to the bird. Then I can touch my X key to bring the radial gradient to the outer edge and from there I can decide if I want to take it down. Let me get rid of that pin out of the way and we make our bird stand out nicely from the background. Now remember that with any mask we use, we can have as many of those masks as we feel is appropriate. Now sometimes we need to click and drag the radial gradient because we need to get it the right orientation for the content of the image we're working on. A lot of the time though, I just need the standard vignette just around the top, bottom edge, left, right and the corners. So I'm going to use the shortcut keys here and also offer a little tip to speed things up. So here I want to do that. So all I'm going to do is touch the J key, which brings up my gradient. But rather than click and drag, I'm just going to double click on screen and it selects the boundaries of the image. I can then hit the X key. I can hit the V key to take away the pin and I've got my Vignette done in seconds. And once again, look at the difference and that was done very quick and dirty. Now I could find examples where the use of the radial gradient is superb all day long. But I think we've done enough. This image I hope to use for a Photoshop technique in a later video. But it's another example of where a basic vignette can make a world of difference. Once again, I'm going to use the shortcuts for speed. J, double click the screen, X to invert it. And then here, I'm just going to use my simple exposure to take down those edges. And when we go back and we turn that mask on and off, the difference is quite a lot. And remember, I have just applied the mask quick and dirty. At any time, I can touch the V key and I can make adjustments to it, even after I've made my edits. I'll see you next time.